I'm not a dog, bro. 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 I'm Granddad with him, grandchildren. Greetings to grandfather, grandmother. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's coming. <laughs> <laughs> he was. He's shy out there. Go on now. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to everyone. I'm so glad I'm here with my grandfather today. Mommy gone, but granddad is still here. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, you like your time now. See, I'm a jar of me. Yeah, yeah. You're a jar of me. You have two teeth. You have two teeth. Uh -huh. If you talk here, we get it. You're done. You're going to meet up with who you never see before in the family. Yeah, and you got to see them. Yeah, no. mm. yeah. Come to me. Mmm. Come, in the Come, 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 uh, and you, who is your father? Richie Mullins. Uh, <laughs> you hope to see them again and know all of them soon. I hope to see all of them soon and know them. All right. Mm. Yeah. Hey, we can't talk. Me always come here for the kid now because I came with the farm. Happy New Year. <laughs> To, to all of my families and friends. My name is Abigail Nevers. Who is your mother? My mother is Monica Mullins. 
with, with your grandmother? Always. <laughs> My grandmother's name is Aunt Marston. With your grandfather. My grandfather. Oh your great grandfather. <laughs> I know your great grandfather. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Come, what's her name? Is in that just myself? Hurley Morrison, also known as Uncle Hurley. Uncle Hurley. <laughs> and and your great grandmother. And Shati. <laughs> 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 and your Debbie speak when time him in Malaysia. Hey. You know, yeah. can't that make them here go, go, go match. Which one? Fimi one where one here. Oh yeah, we can put it on, yes. We got the, the, the.
labor he had done that which was present in your sight. And God, we thank you for the example of that he left us. And God, we know that that was done because of you. We glorify your name today, O oh God, for all the blessings that you have left us through him. We thank you for his children. We pray for them, O oh God. We pray that you may help us to see the things that he had done as things which are worthwhile to emulate. Lord, there, there is grief right now. Whatever the Father is calling, and the calling for us in this lesson, sometimes are the things that bring us closer to you. So, Heavenly Father, even this calling may it be that which brings us even closer. We pray for his family today, O oh God, those who we left. And we pray, O Heavenly Father, that we may see through Him because of you. That there are things that, that are necessary for us to do. Things that you have called us to do. And you are waiting on us to do. So grant us these mercies, Heavenly Father. Teach us your way. Because your way is the way of truth. And the night. Lord, we do not know what's taking place right now. We know that he's absent from us. Lord, we cannot decide in any form or fashion, God, what's taking place. But we hope, Heavenly Father, that things are right. And pray, O oh God, that even as we are left behind, we may seek to do the things that are right to be with you someday when you call us or truly someday we shall be in a state as he is. So Heavenly Father, I pray for, for comfort to us today, not only the family of Heavenly Father, but all of us who are left behind. Teach us your way and call us Heavenly Father to learn of you, to obey you, to trust you, and to accept you. Father, I pray again, especially for your children, this family. Lead them, Heavenly Father, and may you give them a heart of, heart of obedience, give them strength, not to mourn us as though everything is lost, but to be mindful that those of us who are left behind do not have to wonder or, or wonder, because if we seek you someday, we shall be comforted because we are we shall be resting in your everlasting arms. So again, in the Father, I pray your mercy is upon us today. Speak your heart and teach us your way. And ask this verse in your precious name. Amen. Amen. For well, this item is not on the program, but allow me to welcome you all as we are gathered here for the Thanksgiving service of our friend and family. We have come from near and far. We want to welcome you heartily to Clarksonville, especially if you're coming to these parts for the first time. Occasions like these give us the opportunity to see friends and families, acquaintances that we have not seen for some time, a very long time. That is part of the stream in this desert of death. And we are able to come together, not only to celebrate one's life, 
want to renew our acquaintance and our fellowship with friends that we have not seen for a long time. The congregation that I see, many that I have not seen for some time now, but I have been not near to see. My name is Hubert Paul, and I have the privilege of pastoring this church for the time being. With me on the platform is Pastor Charles Robson, that you have just heard the Lady Prayer. He is an associate of the church here. We also have Pastor Michael Willis member of the family who is pastoring the Monte Domain area. We welcome him heartily. Also with us on the platform is Deacon William Lawrence, a member of the community who now resides in Kingston and is a deacon of the First Baptist Church here in Kingston. And the Key word is our friend uh, and uh, brother, brother Hines, who has been gracing us in these past days with his presence and his skill at the key word. And we welcome Paul to this third service of Thanksgiving. I'm going to invite Deacon Lawrence to assist in the program. We have a lengthy one before us. And we invite you to, especially those who are taking part, we implore upon you to be as brief as possible in your tributes, also to make yourself readily available when your time comes. It's amazing how we can lose time by just having to wait on someone who is to walk all the way from the back to come up here. But we ask you to be near so that when your time comes, you will be at hand. Again, I want to welcome to everyone. May God bring comfort, especially to the very time we commit our sister and mother, Vishati, as we come on the corner and uh, children, grandchildren, and the great-grandchildren too. Yes, we extend to all of you our deepest sympathy as you bring the loss of your loved one. But we comforted in the fact that the Lord has been pleased to lend it to us for a good time that he lived the life that each one of you can be justly satisfied that at this time he be called you can find comfort in those things that he has left behind so that your own spirits might be blessed. May the Lord be with us and continue to guide us as we go through the service. I'll regards to the comment from the Pastor. Morning, one and all. I am here again. Don't remove her to back to the living room, still living on the other side. Was here last week. Would I couldn't allow the service to go on without 
same popularity as you. And that's why we all died here today. The first lesson comes to us from Psalm 27. 1, 2, 14, Rihanna, Taylor, Natalia, Cynthia, granddaughters, will read. Good morning.
Robinson. I am the niece of Uncle Hurley. This is my brother Vince up here to support me. Um, and we're speaking um, for our mom, Doreen, one of the five sisters this morning. Mom wants you all to know that she has, te has 10 siblings, four brothers, and had a very special relationship with Uncle Hurley. She doesn't want Uncle Webster to get jealous, but she had a special relationship with Uncle Hurley. She's been engaged with his illness from the beginning and throughout his illness. The two of them were engaged, speaking regularly. She describes him as being a caring and loving brother. When my grandmother, our grandmother, Mama, migrated to the United States at age 60 when most, pe most people were retiring, he stepped up to serve not only as brother but as a caregiver, working with my grandfather to take care of the home and to take care of the family. And according to my mother, he gave my mom and my Aunt Pat money, right? So they got money weekly. Uncle Hurley was a prideful man, I think you all know this. And he cautioned them to not go begging, right? But to live within the means of what he was able to provide for them. Nothing was too good for his family. And to my Aunt Shati, and to all the kids and the grandkids and the great-grandkids, my mother wants you all to know that you all meant everything to Uncle Hurley. He loved you all more than this life itself, all right? And she also just briefly wanted me to share a story just to sort of illustrate who he was. They had a disagreement, as families do, and they stayed up all night, all night, talking through this disagreement. My Aunt Shanti came looking for him because he had been out all night, okay? Um, but they stayed out and they were able to resolve it. And so I'm going to end it with that on a personal note, um, coming to visit. Um, as, a, as a niece coming to visit my uncle, coming to visit Jamaica, I, I looked up to my uncle, tall, striking man with a beautiful, beautiful smile and a very strong personality. You didn't mess with him, but he was also very gentle. And so I'm going to end it there just by, again, on Shati, Marga, all the kids, all the grandkids, the great grandkids. We're here. As a family, we're here to support you all and thank everyone who's come out to support this family. Good afternoon. My name is Sharon and I'm Uncle Early. I'm the niece of Uncle Early. Um, today, we thank God for Uncle Early and that we were chosen to be his immediate and extended family. Uncle Early was a stellar person and, a great, uh, oh, and of great character and led by example. He always encouraged us to be mindful of others' feelings. He wanted us to have love and happiness for each other and indeed for everyone, towards everyone we meet. He always says that he wants us to have, wants us to live a life that honors and draws clearer to God. Isaiah 41 10 says, so do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will, I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And Shati, or as I'll call you, Shati Oi, his children, his siblings, great-grandchildren, Great great grandchildren, nieces, nephews, and cousins, let's live a life that exemplifies his life. His spirit will forever live with us in the memories that we cherish and the love we share. Family and friends, 
May the Lord, may the Lord grant us strength and comfort. Rest in peace, Uncle Early. We love you always. The second lesson comes to us from Revelation chapter 20, 11 to 15. Maria, I hope I didn't pronounce it incorrectly. What is it? Imani. Imani, okay, Morris. Okay, grand
because I knew I could depend on him for the acceptance that I needed. So Uncle Hurd was probably always the one we thought who was the quiet one, the humble one, the one who was always here. Because I remember when I saw him, and I asked him one time, where was Miss Shati? And he said that Miss Shati was gone abroad. And I said to him, then Uncle Hurd opened the door and he said, this poor was gone one time. <laughs> So he knew that somebody always had to be there for somebody else, and he was that one. And so that is why I can stand today for my sister and myself to say, we had an uncle who we knew we could depend on, because he was always here, he never left. And that is what I have to say today, that Uncle Hurley was always, always there, and one that we could go to as our go-to person growing up. I'm sorry I was not here to see him because I was one of the last ones to migrate. So I haven't been here that much for the past five years. But every time I came, I still saw him. Sometimes I saw him with Maki. So I know that is my uncle, this calm, steady one, who was always here, always the one that you could trust. If you felt that you needed to be comforted, if you felt that you needed to be where family was, you could always come up to his house. The house changed over the years, but it was still the comforting place that you knew that you could come to. So that is my tribute to my uncle for always being there for us. I just want to, I'm going to share a poem um, 
let me go for it now. My hero, you held my hand when I was small. You caught me when I fell. You are the hero of my travels and my later years as well. And every time I think of you, my heart still filled with pride. Though I will always miss you, Dad, I know you are by my side. In laughter and in sorrow, in sunshine and in rain, I know you are watching over me until we meet again. Oka Hurley, my dad, my hero, my forever friend, may your soul rest in peace and light your virtual shine.
at that time there was prominent news of the misconduct of co-workers of mine and he sent called me up the house and he sat me down and he reminded me that my parents and the community include himself prepare us for who I am and they expect me to maintain that and to this day as a retiree I've never disappointed him. Um, even in recent time, I would visit him at the house and we teach up on the veranda. Up to maybe just over a month before his passing, I was at the house with him. And uh, subsequently went into the hospital and I was at the phone with him. Same way. Now, I want the family with the siblings and children in particular to not let his life go in vain. Now, if we fail to emulate the good that he has taught us, that he has practiced, then it would be a waste of the quality citizens. Now the community, the citizens, will be poor of our response, but rich that he left the legacy on which we can practice. I pray that his soul will rest in peace and light perpetual shine upon him. It's a very special moment me to stand in the hands of the children. As a little boy living in this community, I was looking at the respective places that I would sit when we were sent to Sunday school. I also would like to see my reverend. When I was living in this community, he was a young pastor, and I'm pleased to see that he's still shepherding this flock. It is sad, but of course there are so many wonderful moments that I've had in this community. I am here this morning to register this tribute on behalf of the Spurl and Mass Band. And I'm going to ask the siblings of the Spurl and Mass Band to stand. There's a sister, right before the one in the middle, a brother. So look around, they are standing because Mass early was very instrumental in what we become today. I have not seen Mass Webster in 48 years. I have not seen undefined and divine for more than those years. She's right here, that my riddle of them. Marvin was the big man in the yard. I was the eldest boy in our yard. As a matter of fact, the houses were on the same premises. And when I look at the program, they made a mistake. They called the cousin. I'm going to ask you to rub it. I am one of Uncle Carly's son. And I'll tell you why. I'm also happy that my name is last in terms of attributes. Therefore, no one is behind me, so I can take a little more time. Because, uh, these people were special to me. And I see Brother Lawrence alluded to what was done to him by Uncle Curly and what he became in life was because of the instruction given to him by Uncle Curly. Well, in the community where we live in the same yard, Thomas Curry was in the middle. Mas Alfred Newland was to the left, and to the right, Mas Tengue. We could not walk out of line. And I'm troubled and worried today because when older people try to 
to provide instruction to young ones. They will not listen. And the deterioration in our society is because of that. So I'm early and grateful because in my community in St. James, uh, um, is nicknamed Prolo No, the state of the community in the country. His guidance would have caused me to be what I am today. And I'm grateful. As a justice of the peace in the parish of St. James, you can't become a JP unless values were instilled. And so Uncle Earl, you did that. You mentioned the butcher. Margaret, I re hope you remember this day. He went over field. Margaret, the biggest boy, the village at home. He went to kill a pig. And when he came back, the pig finished quickly and had to go back over field. That was a long time, I remember. So what he was doing to us, he was providing the opportunity for us to get very disciplined. And so in life, we cherish those moments. On the early, they mentioned that Mars Repto was quiet. Yes, Mars Repto was very quiet. On the early, was a little love. And we love that on the website. As a matter of fact, in the life, he was kind to us because as a family, he allowed us to live in his house. Well, it was not free. But we did not host him, but we live in his house. His body is still there. But we thank him a lot on the website. And the fine, I don't remember which one you got marked, and the reception was at the home. Is which one? That's right. We had the people and the little boy who was invited. Miss Pearl and Jimmy were there. And we saw and they had the sense. Did you go to which music? I don't remember. But I know I wore my suit. Short pants and suit. So they accepted us in the family. So food, when we go up and we said, uh, we eat up there so. <laughs> and then we go up and we eat again. Because let's put this with people. Some people in communities are really more privileged than so. Yeah. So they have a food up there. So our children, they never run me. No, I'm coming to the shot, you know. We shot the kitchen out of the door for the door it was. Yes. They will know when the smoke pull up. They did not go. And for John Hassan, God bless his soul, where has died. Be shotty, your best one is not here. That's money. He had his own challenges recently. But Be shotty never let us leave the house hungry. We know we could go there. So I spoke with David, he's in Canada. He has sent his condolences for you. Because David also was part of the community where we run up and down and play marble. But this family, we cherish them. They did so much for us. My brothers and my sisters, they're always kind to us. Yes, cool. Margaret, man, you're a bigger brother and good brother to all of us. And I tell you, because of what we early did, None of us have run into trouble with the law. You never abandoned me, brother. None of my brothers from early was the architect of that. Because it taught us that we must walk straight. And we did that. And so we shot it and they raised a young family right now. No, I mean Judith, I mean Mackie, Sharon. I mean, Angela, that's my rough daughter, right? Uncle Webster, the one that didn't know who came and gave a tribute. You are a wonderful family. And the show here today for Uncle Early testified that his life was a living one. His yes. life was a living testimony. Yes, sir. That so many people to come yes. And finally, you alluded to the meat. We used to get free meat. <laughs> Free meat. And so I'm grateful. I'm going to call down on all of you because the rest of the family I see you after the service. Well, I must call you on Michelle because you because you have done so much for our family. My mother would pass.
they were sold. They were like this. And let me show you something on Broadway. If it was in this time, they washed up because they were close. But it was a family. And they shared what they had. So may soul rest in peace. I love you and the Shanti. And I hope you will be the warmth. And that you live 60 years. Yes. Early. Oh God. So. You know, my man, you are Jimmy. Yes, sir. All right. I know you're not wrong. You may not remember me. But when I saw the name, I said, Mary Spur, I remember you very, very, very. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Well, you all heard everything about Uncle Larry. But on my way down this morning, I was saying to myself, for the years that I know her, and I've known him a mighty long time, because I'm not a boy, I'm a big man, and I've known him mid all my life. I don't know if that man ever raised his voice. Anybody ever hear him raise his voice? You hear him? <laughs> if you hear him, then you can tell me, yes, Uncle Ernie raised his voice. And I've known that man for my Oh, Mr. Mike, they are not this life. Never heard of that. That's the Uncle Herbie that we're talking about. Now we're going to change things a little bit. And uh, there's a song here. I was just saying to Pastor. A country where no twilight shadows keep us. On the day where night shall never be. A city where no storm clouds ever gather. Now this is just what heaven means to me. So watch this.
the end of our program. We are going to have a selection. It's Marie Newland. And after that selection, the next voice you'll hear will be the pastor, Reverend the Word Paul. So you will ask Marie Newland. Praise the Lord. I know my early from long time, and I was young, not old. I know my early when you were saying beef, you were come and say beef, and my parents sent me down to my early to buy some meat. So when we go down here to my early, I want like 15 pounds of beef, right in my shoulder still. And so you cut the beef and say, okay, you have to wait in a part somebody before you. So when you say, okay, I'm going to wait. And next time I said to Master Ali, I said, Master Ali, you have any liver? Master Ali said, I have little liver here, and I'm going to have somebody. He said, we want a piece of liver, Master Ali. Anyway, I put, he said, we want two pounds of liver. My story said, all right, you don't cut two pounds of liver, but you don't tell nobody to say it, you know? My story cut the liver and he said, and then he said, and then he said, and that's it. My story was a good man, a loving man. The song says sometimes you feel that sometimes you feel you sometimes you fall to your knees and pray. But sometimes you feel like you're going broken. You're still holding on to the God and changing and thank you. Sometimes I fall to my knees and pray. Um, Jesus, come.
grace to share this afternoon. I have been learning after 47 years in the ministry. One of the things that I have learned more so in recent days is to read the Word of God, read the Bible. God spoke through the prophet Isaiah, and he says, My word shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things we are to ascend it. While it is good to hear a good sermon, yet the word of God is more important. Because many so-called sermons do not have much of the word of God in them. So even at funerals, I am learning to read the Word of God. And I shall do so this afternoon. And I read from a psalm of which you are well acquainted. Psalm number 46. And everybody knows the first verse. I read from the New International Version. And I also would like to say that the second thing that I am learning these days is not to preach a long sermon at your house. The tolerance level The desolation he has brought on the earth. 
He makes waters or he makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Our refuge. Amen. May God be pleased to bless his word. The word of God. It's an umbrella term that is used to speak of the person who is considered supreme and sovereign. In the case of the Bible, it speaks to him who is and is recognized as from the Christians as the one who is the creator of heaven and earth, the one who is the ruler and sustainer of the universe. As a Christian, 
I like to remind congregations, not just as a funerals, those to whom I minister among the churches that I pastor will be all the fact that I take time out to identify him who is the God of the Bible. Because the God of the Bible is different from the other gods. I say there are many gods. And yet, the God of the Bible stands out. He claims to be the Most High. And that term is used quite frequently, especially in the book of Daniel. Daniel was in the land of Babylon. They had their gods. But Daniel was serving the God of Israel. And he was wont to identify this God always as the most high. A term that is used in some quarters in reference to another God. But we claim that this term refers to the God of the Bible. He is the Most High. He is the Lord Almighty. He is the God of Jacob. There is something peculiar about this reference to him as the God of Jacob. Those of you who are well acquainted with the Bible will remember that Jacob, the patriarch in Genesis, was given a name by God himself. There came the time when God said to him, to Jacob, your name will no longer be Jacob. You will be called Israel.
we are living in a world where there are some calamities taking place. We are living in a world of chaos. And if you don't believe it, no. Just listen and look what is to come. Because I don't care who you supported in the American elections. But I want to say to you without any doubt that the results of that election will affect the whole world. And from the hard writing that we have seen before and what we have heard I declare to you that there is going to be more trouble in the world. So the calamitous situations that we face now, the chaos that we face now, and the confusion that we face now in the world, will all make it worse. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us so. So we don't have to see the handwriting or hear what is happening or what will happen. The Bible tells us that in the last days, trouble sometimes will come. But thank God, there is a God who is called the Most High. There is a God who is called the Lord Almighty. There is a God who is called the God of Israel. No, the God of Israel. And if you didn't know, let me tell you, and there are others who will join me in telling you, that in spite of the calamitous situations in the world, in spite of the confusion, the chaos, this God is still in charge. This God still rules. He is the one who wakes you up every morning. For the Bible says, in Him we live and move and have our being. This is the God of the Bible. This is the God of the Christians. We make no apology to say that He rules and He reigns today as ever before. And He will continue to rule and to reign in this world. Simon says, Be still and know that I am God. Yes, and if you if you remember nothing that I said today, remember this. Because I'm going to close with this. Remember that the psalmist encourages us. God Himself speaks through the psalmist when He says, "Be still and do." Yes. 
be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Yes. I hope you can say with us, with the psalmist and those of us who have already taken time out to listen to him and to have a glimpse of him. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob yes. is our refuge. May God bless his word to us. Amen. For his name's sake. Amen. This
Yes. So help the family members to be hopeful. Yes. Help so that they stay together. They've done this before, but in this particular moment, they need to be together. Miss Shati and Shati, oh God, I ask that you keep your presence very close to her. And for living such so long, over 60 years married, it is a massive loss. So oh, ask, yes, oh God, yes, yes. that you send Gabriel yes. to provide comfort. Yes. And so that she will not get into depression, but she will continue to hold her faith that you are Jesus and you are the King yes. of all kings. And as we move to the graveside, I pray, oh God, that you will guide the proceedings. And we thank you for holding on the rains. Other parts of the country now is raining. Yes. And so we're glad that you have heard oh, our yes. cry. Yes. Yes. Be with each family member. Help them, oh God, to recognize that you are God and you must be in their lives. Yes. Please greet us now. We pray Jesus will Amen. Amen.
First time a part there, right? JD, hmm? first time a part there. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Emotional. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.